Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization, Nutrition Myths number two, the fat loss lifestyle. Let's dig in. First, we're gonna talk about the claim, make sure we're exactly on the same page of what it is that's mythical here. We're gonna talk about why it's wrong. Then we're gonna talk about some grains of truth because every single one of these myths in the series does have some grains of truth to it. And then we're gonna talk about best practices to synthesize everything and move forward with an actual plan versus just ragging on myths and learning nothing from it. Although that would be entertaining. So the claim of the fat loss lifestyle is that to lose fat and to become and be fit, you need to start a restrictive diet and keep doing that very same super restrictive diet as long as you want to keep being fit, even after you're already at your goal. So if it took you 1,500 calories a day to get to 130 pounds, the logic there is that's gonna just keep being 1,500 calories of all clean food, no cheats, no cake, and that's how you stay there, right? The idea here is that there's only one on mode to a fitness lifestyle. It gets you to where you wanna be and keeps you there. And the off mode just careens you off of control and back to your old crappy ways where you turn into a fat piece of crap again. So you're either attaining and maintaining at the same time or you're backsliding. This is just not true. Why? At least four reasons. First, getting fit is much much harder than staying fit once you've achieved even a really exotic level of fitness. Getting lean is a trillion times harder than staying at a certain leanness. Getting strong is a trillion times harder than staying strong. Getting big is way harder than staying big. It's not the same thing. And here's the thing. People, tons of people, the average person sees no difference between the two. I know a ton of you folks out there are really lean and jacked and you talk to strangers randomly or rather they talk to you at airports and bus stations and schools. You, I'm sure I've heard this before, grocery stores, like, man, it must take a lot of work to look like that. And you never know how to answer the question because you're like buying burritos while they're talking to you and you're like, yeah, yeah, tons of sacrifice all the time. The grain of truth to that is that it took a ton of work to get to where you are. But if you're just maintaining it like 10% body fat as a male or you know 17 as a female, a lot of times with average genetics, after a few weeks or months of maintenance, it's just not that hard. And you eat cookies and ice cream and this and that, you have a core of healthy eating, but after that, it's really just not that big of a deal. People don't know that. They legit think that MMA fighters, for example, who only train hard a few times a year for months at a time, they think these guys train 40 hours a week every week. They think that bodybuilders are always on their specific diet. Like, my dad will offer me food when I'm at home and I'm like, dad, I can have whatever. It's not a big deal. I know how to eat. He's like, okay, is this okay for your diet? And I'm like, yes, good God. If that's how people think, binary thinking. And a lot of people who get into fitness think like this. The problem is if you think like this and you actually try to pull it off with constant restriction, it can sap your life completely of joy or nearly. It's also going to drive you insane slowly but surely. And because you are taking an inherently unsustainable process and trying to sustain it. That is almost the definition of insanity. So the analogy there that I think of is, you know, taking an airplane, airplanes are designed to take you somewhere. And then you get off and you go to your destination and you enjoy it. Staying on a restrictive diet once you've achieved your fitness goals is kind of like when the plane lands in Hong Kong, you don't walk out, you just stay in the plane. The plane's a fine place to be, but not for a long time. You may be flying business class, but at some point, that's no way to sleep versus a real bed. So if the journey is temporary, once you get to the destination, the accommodations are supposed to be different. You're not just supposed to do the same stuff it took to get there to maintain being there. Really, at the end of the day, if you try this, it's a recipe for burnout because you can only burn at 100% for so long. And... If you never take breaks or ease in, once you get to your goal, you almost certainly will fail. 
and fail people do. Because this understanding not only makes people fail a lot, it keeps them from even trying. A lot of folks, you know, will say like, oh, so like what kind of diet do you have to do? And you know, you know they're asking you how you got there. And you're like, well, you know, protein shakes and brown rice and pasta and chicken. And they're like, what about ice cream? And you're like, well, you know, when I'm getting ready for a bodybuilding show, I usually don't have ice cream. And they're like, no, ice cream, that's not for me. And even if they don't ask someone that, what do they do? They leaf through muscle magazines or go on Instagram. And all of a sudden they see all these people eating these healthy foods and they think, okay, this restrictive diet gets you this. So if I have to cut out cookies and ice cream, which is only something you might have to cut out temporarily, they just assume it's forever. They don't even bother trying that out. I can't live like that, but you don't have to live like that. That's the big deal. Now, there are some grains of truth here. Getting into much better shape than you are currently is hard. And if you can't ever commit to hard for the short term, you probably won't get into better shape. It does probably require you to buckle down for like a few months. Two to three months can make a real big impact, for example, on fat loss, all right? That strict dieting you will do during that time will get the job done, whereas just some helpful hints and some healthier eating might not. Okay, so there's definitely a time and a place for really, really strict work. But once you get to your destination, you lose the 15 pounds, your diet is not the same and neither is the training. You don't have to train as much. You don't have to diet as strictly or as hard. Maintenance is very, very different from pushing towards a goal aggressively, a goal especially that's pretty far off of where you normally are. So best practices to take away from this, now that we know that there's a myth of the fat loss lifestyle, it's not supposed to live like that, it's just in temporary phases. So here's the deal. Number one, if you want to get in much better shape, you're gonna have to buckle down, you're gonna have to restrict calories and macros, you're gonna have a strict diet plan. You can do it other ways, but this is by far the most efficient and the most reliable. Like if you actually do this, you're going to get in better shape. You have to hold yourself accountable during this process, but this process is for a, at best, specified time and specified goal. So it's not like you say to yourself, I'm gonna just lose fat until, unless you're very experienced and you're playing with exotic body composition, that's not a good idea. What you should do is say, three months, I'm gonna lose five pounds a month and I'm gonna lose 15 pounds total. That's my goal. That's how long I know this work week mentality is gonna take me. And after that, I'm gonna have the weekend mentality of easing up and not being so crazy. Once you know that it is a temporary state, look, you can grind hard if you know the shit comes to an end at some point, right? Once you achieve your goal, the trick here is to continue to be as physically active as is possible and sustainable and enjoyable. Continue to eat mostly healthy foods. That means you were eating brown rice, chicken, etc. when you were doing a fat loss diet only eating that. Now you mostly eat that and you have a little bit of junk on the side. It's not taking the chicken or brown rice and replacing it entirely with junk. That is a recipe for gaining all your weight back and losing all your fitness. During this transition time, you watch your weight pretty carefully. If it spikes up a little bit, eat a little bit less, a little bit less junk especially, a little cleaner. And then if your weight starts to trend down, which sometimes it will, let's say after a fat loss phase, you don't want it to go down any further. At your goal, you got to eat more food or maybe treat yourself to more, more treats every now and again. But generally speaking, as your metabolism and your energy expenditure are going to adjust, your hunger levels are going to adjust, you're going to have more and more freedom to eat more and more junk and just be a little bit more relaxed as you go week to week to week. The longer you maintain, the easier this process gets. And eventually, you really probably won't have to track your energy intake and your macros. You'll have these really good habits that just keep you where you are and you won't have to 1000% think about tracking everything all the time. So what you wanna do is buckle down, get the work done, be strict. Afterwards, in the maintenance phase, a little less strict every week as your body weight seems to not be responding from you adding food and having a bit more junk a more sustainable training plan, cardio plan, so on and so forth. And eventually after usually a few months, it's like you always weighed what you weigh. And because you have these awesome core habits from your fat loss journey that you've kept, some of them, it allows you to continue to live in balance with tons of treats, tons of fun, not weighing yourself on the scale all the time or counting every macro and still maintain those results. So if you want Afterwards, once you've maintained for a while and you're now at a new body weight, new fitness level, new fat loss, if you want more results, let's say you got to 155 pounds, but now you want to get to 145, you got to reinvest. You have to turn up the heat again with another tough plan, get there, 
do that whole maintenance phase thing again, and then you'll be there for good, eating a really well-balanced, not super restrictive diet. Like regressive underload on IG says, one of our RP uh, employees, Melissa Davis, a great, great follow by the way, regressive underload is an amazing uh, RP uh, um, IG handle. She says, fat loss dieting is temporary suffering for long-term results. So when you see someone fit, see them super lean, understand that they made temporary sacrifices, but they can look pretty close to what they do when they're in super good shape in the long term just by having those core healthy habits and not being insane all the time. Folks, thanks for tuning in. See you next time for the next myth.